Hi everyone, this is Lisa Espinosa, spiritual career coach, author, and host of the podcast Soul Studio for Your Career. I'm so happy to be here with you today for this special Facebook Live all about spiritual activism and the role of spiritual activism in these times. And this is kind of a precursor, hello Cindy, to my priestess gathering tomorrow that I'm holding all about prayer, peace, and power. That is a free offering as well, so if you are interested, um, make sure to register for that. So before we begin, let's start in prayer. Let's open with a beautiful invocation so that we are here in a good way. So just taking some nice cleansing breaths. Allow your breath to bring you to this moment Right, to bring you to this moment, this space, trusting that you are here exactly when you are meant to be. And as you breathe, starting to relax your nervous system, starting to set the intention, hello Nancy, to be really present, to give yourself permission to be present in this moment present to your own soul's wisdom that will come through, present to the divine. And as we bring our palms together, I call upon the grace of God, if that word doesn't resonate, the grace of the divine, of source, of goddess, to surround each of you here live and each of you who will watch the recording, the transmission, and to surround our whole circle with this energy of grace and love and miracles and courage as we keep saying yes to fulfilling our divine mission that often makes us feel very vulnerable and tender. So I welcome this circle around us and I welcome all of the div divine beings who are here supporting our journey your guardian angels, the archangels, the divine mother in all her forms. I especially call on Our Lady of Guadalupe, who is one of our overlighting mentors here today, who I've been in deep relationship with for many years now. So we welcome her grace, her wisdom, her love. And we end with a namaste. Namaste, everyone. So, um, you know, I was really guided to have this conversation. I've been having this conversation with my clients, with my uh, online coaching group. And, and I've, in a lot of ways, have been having this conversation with all of you who've been following me for years. And if this is your first time connecting with my work, welcome. And, you know, this year has been so powerful in so many ways. And we knew, or many of us knew coming in, 2020 was about a lot of things. And one of the things it was about was clear vision, 2020 vision, seeing clearly. And that process of seeing clearly is often painful because we're saying we're going to see the shadow as well. Not that, oh, I'm just going to see the light and beauty, but I'm going to see it all to bring it to the light, right? So... First with the pandemic, right, that is still going on. And I'm transmitting this from Chicago, by the way, for those of you who are watching who are not from here, I just wanna name that. Which was so, um, which is, was, is, just brought a lot of change, brought a lot of fear and stress and, and all sorts of things. And I know that many people, all of us in some way have been affected and were affected economically, uh, career-wise, you know, my husband's a teacher for the Chicago Public Schools and there, there was so much change uh, that that brought upon and I'm sure if you're watching this that it affected you in some profound ways even if if it didn't affect you personally just as a highly sensitive person as someone who cares for the world who is here to be a way shore to be a beacon of light of course you would be affected you would be and and rightly so right we, we want to be not flattened by the pain of the world but we want to be affected we want to there are times that it is appropriate to be grieving or to be sad 
So all of that happening. And then of course now the last few weeks with, you know, just all that has been unfolding, these really important conversations around race that has not started now. You know, Black Lives Matter movement started in 2013 and it's, and even before it was called that, it's been a conversation, it's been a, a journey in this country for a long time. So, and yet we've hit critical mass, right? This momentum that is happening with all of the protests. I know there was also violence, all of those things that were happening. And many of us are feeling just so tender with everything that's unfolding. And I know for me, you know, I'm not a black woman, so I cannot, I can't speak for that experience and I wanna be very clear. But I am a brown woman, you know, I am a Mexican American woman. I was born here, but my parents were born in Mexico and immigrated here undocumented for many, many years until, you know, amnesty was allowed and now they are citizens. So um, this has affected me, you know, this in, in other ways as well. So <clears throat> right now, you know, the work I do is about helping us to evolve our career by following the guidance of our soul. So I wanna name that, right? It's like, now for you, your career might be very much what it is, or if you're retired, it might be how you share your medicine now, even if you're retired. Like, how do you share your medicine? And it, it does not happen in a vacuum. It It is happening with everything that's unfolding in the world. And as I, the first weekend when protests started and things started, hello Karen, hello Mary, to get very intense. And, you know, that weekend, and I shared some of this already in another Facebook Live, but it's important to name right now. You know, here in, in our community, you know, there was just like, I'm sure in many, there were so many sirens and helicopters and just a lot of, um, painful conversation wording hello Leticia that was happening and it was so I was really going through a lot of what is my role here how am I being called to respond and to give a little background when I was a teacher in the Chicago Public Schools which now that was 10 years ago I can hardly believe it but I was a teacher for almost 10 years you know, I was very much involved in the social justice movement, very much taught a social justice curriculum, very wrote about social justice, wrote about being a Latina and um, the relationships between the African-American and Latino community I was very, very much involved. And when I left teaching to this, to start this new journey, it's not that I left social justice behind, but I was delving into spirituality now. My soul was calling me in a different direction. Still very much caring deeply about the injustices of the world, of course. And throughout the years, it's been, it's always been this ongoing conversation with my soul and I like, what's my role? Because I still very much believe in being active, of course, that action is required. But my understanding uh, my relationship with my soul, with the divine, with spirit is so much more deep, is so much deeper now than it was before. I have a higher perspective now. Um, so when, as all this has been unfolding, there's been this little battle inside of me, I have to say, this self-judgment that was coming up for me a lot in that part of me really felt that if I really cared about these issues, I would just kind of go back to how I used to be involved in the world. And at the same time, my heart was guiding me in a different direction. Not that I don't care about these issues, not that I don't believe it's important to take action, absolutely. But that my heart and the divine was guiding me in this different form of activism, which I am not the first person to call it spiritual activism. So I wanna name that, I'm not making this up. You know, many, many spiritual teachers have been talking about this for years and I'm so grateful for them for giving me a framework. 
But for me, it was really, as all this has been unfolding, it's been really going into deep prayer and meditation of like, what am I doing? You know, what's my role? And how do I make sure that I'm not using spirituality to bypass challenging emotions and to bypass challenging conversations, perhaps? So um, throughout all this, what came up was this realization that my soul is absolutely, that that's the evolution of my um, contribution to the ascension of the world, to this birthing of heaven on earth, is this marriage of spirituality and action. Which is why I love the word spiritual activist, because it has the word active action. So there is action that is required. We live in the earth plane. We live in the earth plane. We said yes to being human, even though it sucks sometimes, I have to say, even though it's challenging. And we are, you know, I wrote in the newsletter I sent out, we are divine beings having a human experience. And we cannot forget that, that we are here to birth new paradigms, to birth new um, structures. Things that our egoic mind, our intellect cannot imagine. So that's the thing with this, you know, that I, I think I had a fear. I have a part that had a fear that as I start talking more about spiritual activism and our role during these times, I didn't want it to be dismissed as, oh, that's just new age you know, naive, woo-woo stuff. It's not the real work, right? And particularly as a very proud Latinx uh, person, that was really hurtful for me to imagine that, that that could be a, a dismissal that could happen. So that was really important for me to to name that connecting with your soul connecting with the divine and saying beautiful god beautiful divine what is my gift to give here right now it takes courage to ask that question and it takes courage to hear the answer and take action on that answer this is not for the faint of heart this is not an easy way out this isn't oh i just it's too much for me so i'm just gonna pray that's not what this is about. Just like I have said forever, for a long time, meditation is not an escape, it's an arrival. It's the same thing for prayer. It's the same thing for energy work. It's the same thing for ceremony. It's the same thing for all of the amazing spiritual gifts we have that we are meant to use to help the planet right now and specifically our country right now. Those are not escapes. And we can't access those spiritual gifts if we are blinded to our own pain, our own biases, our own discomfort. So I want to name that, that this isn't some, and I, you know, I very much love the New Age movement. So I, I don't, when people kind of dismiss it or talk about like, oh, the, um, yeah, the naiveness of the New Age movement. I never agree with that because I know that there are many of us who are part of the New Age movement who are, are so courageous, who have had challenging lives, who have done so many hard things. And at the same time, I understand the criticism of the New Age movement at times that it can be, um, because we all do this, not just in the New Age movement and Christianity and all spiritual movements, that spirituality can be used as a form of escape. And that's not what I'm about. And that's not what this is about. So what am I talking about, right? I'm talking about being in a conversation, in an ongoing conversation with your soul, with the divine. And I, I wanna say, if this is the first time you connect with me, with my work, please understand that I am not uh, attaching this to any one religion, in fact, I have a lot of issues with religion. This is a spiritual conversation that welcomes all spiritual traditions. 
as I speak, I often use Christian. It's interesting to me that I do that because I've had so much trauma with Christianity, but I often use terms that might be considered Christian, but please understand that this is a, a inclusive conversation. God is not bound by any one religion. So spiritual activism is about having this ongoing conversation with God, with the divine, on what is my role here? What is, when I was preparing for this Facebook Live, as I was looking forward to it, and, and this morning, really I woke up so early for hours just in prayer and meditation, asking God, Goddess, what do you want me to say? <laughs> like what, and, and so, this is such a charged time that it can be really hard to not feel stuck or limited by, oh my gosh, people are going to judge me or people are going to think this or this person can be offended, you know, all of those things. And in, to an extent, of course, we want to be mindful. And that's always my intention. I don't want to offend. I don't want to judge. I don't want to hurt. Um, at the same time, we can be, especially those of us who are, uh, we are peace keepers at heart, who came here to birth peace, to birth a new paradigm of unity. It can, these times can feel very challenging. And it can lead us to either become numb or just kind of like, I'm just going to not see anything that's out there. And which isn't helpful really that isn't to say that we need to it's like what jesus said right to be in the world but not from it something like that i'm you know what i mean so i am absolutely mindful about sometimes i just do not watch the news i do not go on social media I absolutely you want to protect your energy but at the same time we are in the world we are here to birth a new paradigm and we can't birth it if we're transcending right so when you ask, and, and as I was meditating, this is what came up, you know, I really told God, Sophia God, Sophia God is, and when I use the word Sophia, please also, I just want to name, you know, I'm a, a student of the Sophia Code. In there, they refer to God as Sophia, but it doesn't have to do with Sophia, the goddess from Greece or anything like that. You can, whatever name of God you want to use is, is welcome here. Universe source. But I said, God, I answer to you. Guide me, please. Bless my tongue and have whatever words are meant to come out, come out. Because if I sit here and allow fear, allow imagining all the people out there, I'm just going to censor myself and it's not going to be, a, I'm not going to be a spokesperson for you. So this is what we're talking about, right? Like having these conversations, help me, God, what's the next step? How do I respond? And one of the most powerful ways is to ask good questions. Ask yourself good questions, your soul ask the divine good questions. And what do I mean by good questions? I mean, the questions actually come from within, right? So as I was in prayer and I was like, God, guide me, questions kept coming into my mind. And I was like, okay, the question is the key. The question is the entryway. So today, you know, I want to give you some questions and I have a lot of them. So we're not going to go through all of them, but actually I'm going to read some of them to you and I want you to be in your soul and see which one, you know, one of my teachers used to say, which one pings you, which one, when you hear it, you're like, Oh, that question really touches me. That's really going to have me go deeper with my soul and with the divine and what my role is right now. So you don't, um, this is recorded, so I don't want you to feel like, oh gosh, I have to write all these questions. You can go back and listen to the recording. What I want you to do as you hear these questions is see which ones resonate, which ones are like, oh, that's a question. It might scare you and that's totally normal. One of the questions that scares me the most that is on here, I have it on here that came from my, my heart from the divine, was um, who are you guiding me to love? Which is so interesting that that question would scare me. 
because I, I consider myself a loving person, but I could feel as I was asking that question, like, who are you guiding me to love? I could feel this resistance. I could feel like, wow, I've got these, these parts of me that are resistant to that question. So it's not like I heard the question and I was like, yay, great. It was like, there was fear, but I could also feel the tenderness and openness that was coming up for me around that. So um, I'll read some of the questions. You kind of notice which one pings you, which one's like, oh, that speaks to me. You might write that one down. And then I'm gonna lead a, a little meditation. Tomorrow in the ceremony that we're gonna have, we're really gonna go be enter that space of prayer. That space, and, and actually let me talk about that a little bit. Again, for so long I hesitated using the word God in prayer, but um, I'm gonna use the word prayer right now, knowing so many indigenous cultures use prayer, so many spiritualities use prayer, if they, they might call it a different name. I called, you know, tomorrow I'm referring to it as a ceremony. And when we enter a ceremonial space, we are entering sacred, holy space. And my teacher, one of my teachers yesterday, she talked about living our life as if we were in ceremony. Living our life as if we were in ceremony. Having conversations as if we were in ceremony. Having, um, you know, teaching our classes as if we were in ceremony. You know, connecting with ourselves as if we were in ceremony. It's a tall order, right? When we are in ceremony, and I've been teaching this to my, you know, in my priestess mentoring program, we enter that space outside of time. We enter a holy space where instantaneous healing is available and divine solutions that our egoic logical mind cannot possibly access which is why it's so important that we enter it which is one of the most important tools of a spiritual activist that we enter regularly into ceremonial space so tomorrow it's going to be all about ceremony an hour of being in that space meditating connecting with your soul chanting sacred mantra receiving your marching order so to speak about how you are meant to be a way shower in these times so i want to name that so let's let me ask the questions here and see which ones speak to you one simple question a powerful question is what is my role right now what is my role this other question what is my gift to give now this is a really powerful question in that I want you to understand that your gift to give came from God. In other words, you are gifted. We are all gifted. All of you who are watching this are gifted and you were gifted with specific gifts to give the world. And sometimes it makes us upset. Like it's amazing how we can have resistance to giving our gift either because of unworthiness or because we're afraid people aren't gonna like it or nobody's gonna receive it or they're gonna judge us or all sorts of things. But when we ask, what is my gift to give? It is a very humbling question because when we receive the answer, we realize, well, this is what I have to give. Even if it, I have resistance, even if it scares me at times, this is my gift to give, so I'm gonna give it. All right, so asking that question, what is my gift to give? What are you guiding me to heal so that I can be of greater service. What are you guiding me to heal so that I can be of greater service? I know for me right now, a lot is coming up about my cultural background and really um, recognizing ways that I still hold shame or hold um, unworthiness, even though on the surface and a big part of me so proud of my, my background and my roots and my lineage, it, that is also, but, and as I've asked that question, that has come up for me. The other thing that has come up for me is this wound around not wanting to make people upset. 
it's so interesting because I do believe that part of my medicine and part of your medicine, I talked about this earlier, is to make people comfortable, to, to make people feel safe. That is a genuine part of my medicine. The shadow of that, the danger in that, the fine line that I have to walk always is that that doesn't slip into, well, I'm just, I don't want to make people uncomfortable. So I'm just going to talk about really kind of surfacey things. Like I, I'm just going to kind of keep it really safe and not go deep. So for, you know, I've, I've been in that conversation with myself for a long time. And now as this, as this, all of this is unfolding, it's another thing that the divine is saying, this is something for me to continue to heal that trauma I have around that because it stems from trauma for me as it does for many of us. If I make people upset, I'm going to be in danger. I will be abandoned. I will be judged. All sorts of things, right? So just that will. This question, uh, which, you know, is kind of came from hearing some of my teachers, one of my teachers teachings, like, how can I be a diplomat for you, God? I'm here as an ambassador, as a diplomat for you. Now, diplomats bring a, a level of grace and a level of comfort but they don't shy away from difficult conversations in fact a lot of times being a diplomat is becoming very masterful at conflict resolution at navigating challenging conversations and challenging times so asking that question how can i be a diplomat for you god divine i asked this question earlier already right who are you guiding me to love? The thing with that question is you're asking, who are you guiding me to love that I'm having resistance to loving? Like, if you have children and you love your children and that's easy for you, that's not the question. You're not asking about that. You're really asking God, who are you guiding me to love that I am resisting loving? That's the question. And we, it, you, cannot, you can dislike someone and still channel love to them. You can have discernment and still channel love. So that's the question. Who are you guiding me to be a channel of love towards? And let me see. Because there's some of them. I'm going to read all of them because we would be here for a long time. But these last two. Where am I holding self judgment? Where am I holding self judgment? So allowing, you know, and I shared that in the beginning, right? Where was I judging myself? I was judging myself because I was recognizing that the form of activism that I take now is going to be different than what it looked like before. And I had a lot of self, and I'm still working through that, self-judgment on that. Um, I can have a lot of self-judgment in... I mean, self-judgment is so toxic. We judge ourselves for, like, I can judge myself for feeling that I'm too passive, that I'm too, I need to be more in people's faces. I can judge myself for that. Or I can judge myself for the other way, like, oh my gosh, I talked way too much about this. I shouldn't have said that. You know, there's all this. So that question, where am I judging myself? And then the final question to ask the divine is, where am I judging others? that you're guiding me to heal, right? Because judgment blocks the divine light from coming through us. Judgment and divinity just cannot coexist. They cannot. It is like they do not mix. God never, ever, ever judges us. I know religion has told us that, some religions, and that's a wound we keep healing. Our soul never judges us. So when we are judging ourselves, or judging others, even if we feel totally righteous in doing it. If we feel like, well, they deserve our judgment because blah, blah, blah. No, I mean, our ego can do that and our parts can do that. And we have compassion for our parts that do this. But the divine does not, isn't, it's like the frequency of judgment, the vibration of judgment is so different than the vibration of the divine. So that's what I remind myself when I see myself being in that place of judgment. Like I just remind myself like, wait. I can't access the love of God. I can't access the divine solutions. I can't access divine inspiration when I'm in that place. But I don't squash it. I recognize I'm having judgment. 
God help me with that. I don't pretend that I don't have it. I don't push it down and exile it because that just makes it grow. I name it. Remember, 2020 vision, that's what this is about. This year and this decade. So it's like, here it is. Here is where I am judging. Bless me, God. Teach me how to heal that. That's what this is about. So notice if any of those, which of those pinged you, which of those spoke to you, which of those, your, you know, tugged at your heart, even if it brought up fear. And I'm going to do their little inner journey and just want to look at my notes and see. Um, I'll leave this other part for tomorrow, for the ceremony tomorrow, which is um, just talking about what is the prayer that is praying you? Like, what is the prayer that is praying you? I'll talk about that tomorrow. As we go into our inner journey, so take some nice cleansing breaths. And those of you who are in the Divine Mother Retreat, remember that question that's, or, you know, the message she had for us, right? Don't be afraid to love more. I remember that coming so clearly and it's coming right now. I feel the Divine Mother just really kind of step forward. So as we take some nice breaths, we welcome Mother Mary. We welcome the Divine Mother in all her forms. I welcome Our Lady of Guadalupe with her cloak of stars. You know, she has been an advocate for the disenfranchised for so long. So we welcome her beautiful energy here. And as I invite you to bring your hands over your heart center, and as you bring your hands over your heart, you're breathing into your heart, welcoming the Divine Mother's embrace. And letting her, I see her just like embracing each of us and as the divine mother embraces you just allow yourself to surrender into that embrace just like really letting your nervous system relax letting your thoughts relax letting your emotions just everything just as you lean into her and as that beautiful release happens Start to feel, and I'm just gonna stay with Our Lady of Guadalupe because I feel her presence so much. Start to feel how she, as you release, you're starting to feel a little stronger, a little more present. You're starting to, you know, um, fill up with your own holy light. So like I, you know, so often when I come to the Divine Mother, I'm just kinda like, <gasps> You know, like, here I am, here's all of this. And she holds me and embraces me and she receives all of that because she doesn't spiritually bypass, right? Mother Mary, the Divine Mother's not like, oh, just get over it. Oh, it's not so bad. Oh, just be positive. She doesn't do that. Like, she lets us do, have, cry, grieve, whatever, rage. And then as we do that, she reminds us, like the Good Mother does, of our own holy light of our own power. That's why tomorrow it's prayer, peace, and power of our own holy light, of our own power, of our own sovereignty, of our own light, of our own courage, of all the hard things we've gone through that have prepared us for these moments. So I see that happening. She embraces you and then you're just like, almost like in spite of ourselves, right? Sometimes we wanna be like, no, no, I'm not ready. I'm still collapsed. And she's like, nope, 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 you are. I'm your divine mother and I know what you're capable of. I'm your divine mother and I know what you came here, the messenger that you came here to be. And and I'm hearing her say, for some of you, it will be, it will look like some like this maybe, Facebook Live or class or, you know, in that way. For some of you, it might be behind the scenes that you are these warriors of light that are praying and sending light and sending healing and clearing dark energy and doing all sorts of amazing, wonderful, powerful things that we need. So you are standing up straight. Your heart is open. And let's be with that question. 
that I shared earlier. As you ask your soul, as Our Lady of Guadalupe stands in front of you with her heart open, her cloak of stars, the moon at her feet, and asking, beautiful Lady of Guadalupe, you who know my soul's purpose, you who know my life's mission, you who um, know what the world is going through right now, what is my gift to give in these times? What is my gift to give? What is my gift to give? And just receive that in your heart. And I actually see her placing a gift in your hands. You already have this gift, but she's placing this symbolic, beautiful wrapped box of like, it has like ribbons and it's just like, it, to me it has her colors like emerald green and gold, but it can look however it looks to you. And this is the gift that is already within you. And she's reminding you, this is your gift, my daughter, my son. This is your gift to give to the world. And what she is saying is she's bringing this awareness that sometimes we dismiss our gifts. We don't realize how important, how magnificent, how needed they are. So she's like, don't throw away your gift. Don't belittle it. Don't dismiss it. Don't compare it to other people's gifts. This is your gift that is yours to give. You are meant to give it. You might have been giving it already, but now it's a different level of giving. So asking, just keep asking, what is my gift to give? What is my gift to give? Show me, what is my gift to give right now? What is my gift to give? And as this beautiful gift gets, just fills your whole body, even if you don't know, if your conscious mind doesn't know yet what it is, that's okay. Just be filled with this light that is your gift be filled with this light and you recognize, oh my gosh, as I give this gift, I am blessed a hundred times, thousand times, infinity times. I am gifted as I gift. I am blessed as I bless. That's the, the beauty of this journey. When you say yes to your divine leadership, it is such a selfless act to be of service and the divine paradox is that in reality, it is a selfish act in, the be in a beautiful way because it leads to our healing and our love and our remembrance of our sovereignty. So as we get ready to close this inner journey, you have your gift. Now I just invite you to have your own beautiful conversation with Our Lady of Guadalupe. If you've never connected with her, that's okay. Just, and you, even some of you might not even know, like, well, what does she look like? Actually, I have a statue of her. This is a beautiful, um, so you can, you probably, if you see this, you'll, you'll notice like, oh yeah, I've seen, I've seen this image before. So just welcome the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe in front of you. And now just have your own personal dialogue with her. Just, just say, Lady of Guadalupe, what, what do you want me to know? And if you have a prayer, a personal prayer in your heart that you need help with, tell her now. Tell her now, like this is between you and her. Tell her now, help me with this. Speak to her. Don't hold back, just really, really share your prayer with her for your own personal life, what you need. And then receive her blessing. I just see her, ray, you know, she's got these rays of light just like, like the sun lamp over us. But sometimes she takes her cloak off and she might wrap it up around you. Just, just receive her blessing. It's between you and her. And with deep gratitude, and close this beautiful dialogue with her, knowing you can continue it. It's an ongoing conversation with your soul, with the divine, with Our Lady of Guadalupe, or any other divine uh, spiritual guide that you connect with. 
and we bring the palms of our hands together deep gratitude we bow to each other to our own beautiful soul and see how your soul bows back to you for your heroic human journey so we end with a namaste namaste everyone thank you everyone i'm just going to pull a card for all of you watching this live hey donna for those of you who are and watching the recording. So let's see. Perfect. Power of my voice. I speak my truth and express my feelings to others with care and compassion. Again, let me read that. I speak my truth and express my feelings to others with care and compassion. Get her. I love this image. I love how she's got this shell, this spiral. So beautiful. The power of my voice. This is from the Soulful Woman Oracle, by the way. Oh, I don't have it at hand's reach, but there it is. I'll write it in the comments section. So I always like giving credit to the creators of these beautiful um oracle decks all right everyone the power of your voice use it for yourself first meaning bless yourself this includes your internal voice watch how you speak to yourself speak to yourself in the greatest reverence bless yourself with your words and then bless others with your words don't ignore that the power of your voice. That's what came through, right? The power of your voice. So maybe that's a great question. How do I use my voice today? Thank you, Karen. How do I use my voice today for you, God? How do I use my voice today? Show me, how do I use my voice today? All right, bye everyone. I hope to see you tomorrow at the priestess gathering. It's 10 to 11. It will be recorded and I will offer it as a, as a link to, in my YouTube channel. So you could rewatch it or if for some reason you can't attend live you will be able to access it that way but please know you have to pre-register i've sent it in my newsletter it's an event on my facebook page it should be on my website as well the link is there thank you nancy thank you all of you who are here and all of you who are watching the transmission i know many of you watch it that way thank you and blessings to all of you bye everyone